Hello, Crafty Morning. Hi, I'm Paula Blankenship, and this is Melissa Osborne. We are here tonight from Heirloom Traditions Paint, and we're gonna to talk to you about our all-in-one paint products, and we're gonna show you how you can totally transform your kitchen with a couple of hours and less than $70 right here on this live tonight. So if you're just joining us, Please tell us where you're from, where you're joining us from tonight. We're also going to be doing a live giveaway right here tonight. We'll be choosing that winner simply by the person who gives us the most reason that you should be the one who gets the cabinet kit color of your choice that should paint an 8x10 kitchen. We're going to get right with it and get right into the painting. Please post your questions right here in the timeline. Melissa and myself, she'll be getting back to you and answering you as quickly as we can. And after the live is over, we'll also post this as a video so you can go back and refer to it. We're going to be talking about colors and great color choices for you and what all the all-in-one paint product can paint over. So thank you for being with us tonight and stay with us. And we're going to go right now, right to our kitchen that we're in. We're in our work kitchen here and I'm going to flip right around and get started right on these laminate cabinets behind me. So we're gonna go right into the project very quickly. I am using a gorgeous color and I'm gonna tip this up so you can see the bottom of the can. It's called Abbey. It's a warm gray and it gives you the great way to kind of transition into the grays. Maybe if you don't have grays already going on in your home and you have more tans and warmer colors, this is a great way if you have oak floor and you wanna bring your kitchen into the gray family. This is a gorgeous gray that will give you that look. And I'm gonna quickly pan over here and show you one of the doors already that we've already painted and that has two coats of this awesome paint that makes even the, a painter who's never had a paintbrush in their hand have awesome results. This is a self-leveling paint that doesn't require you to do any stripping or any sanding on your project before you get started. We're even going to paint this old outdated white dishwasher. So um, this is gonna be doing that a little bit as we go along here. So. First thing you want to do is get ready, and that is protect everything that you don't want this paint to bond to, including your clothing or anything laying around. Maybe cover up your countertops. Also, protect your hands and get yourself, get yourself covered up because this paint has a unique way of bonding to your fingernails and to your skin. So that's the first thing you do. Get you some plastic gloves or kitchen gloves, whatever you have on hand. And then you're going to stir and agitate your paint. Once you get it, take an old household spoon or a wooden stir stick, go down in that jar, and you want to stir it a couple minutes. Get it really good and stirred after you receive your paint. And the next thing that you do is wipe down your kitchen cabinets using one of these Scotch-Brite pads. These are a great way to clean and degrease. You don't want to paint over grease, and there's all sorts of grease in the bathroom, in the kitchen. There's hairspray buildup and so on. So very important, don't clean with anything that says oil soap. Like a, any kind of a cleaner that says anything about oil, you want to hear this part very important. Make sure that you remove the oils from the cabinets all the airborne grease because you cannot paint oil. You can't paint over that and expect it to bond, so it won't. That's one inherent property of this paint. It doesn't mix with oil, so make sure to remove that. So I can't press that enough. It's absolutely a necessity. TSP, you can buy that. That is a simple powder that's inexpensive. You can also clean with a vinegar and water solution or simple green or any other household degreasing agents that you may already have. So let's just jump right in here and start painting. And I wanna show you the amazing coverage and what we can do with our first coat. This is our true applicator sponge. And the reason we have the paint poured out right here in this little, in this plate, is we're gonna use this true applicator. And this is another tool that you can get right tonight. And you're going to be saving money right here. If you are shopping on Amazon, you can see the link already pinned and post here. So it's easy to find. Oh, yeah. She's about to post that, sorry. You're ahead of me and get right into your project. Again, this is a full laminate. You can see there's no wood here. Using the true applicator, we're gonna get on our base coat. And we're gonna show you how quickly this goes. And you can get on your first coat and then get ready to put on your second coat, which may be your last final coat. So let's just move quickly and get this on so you can see how easy you can actually paint your kitchen in a few hours. We see people post often that people are getting quotes to paint their kitchen cabinets, which have become very popular for thousands of dollars. And if you've had that happen, please post that here. But we want to show you how you can do it literally brush stroke free using these amazing tools and all the products that we offer at Airline Traditions Paint. And all of the products that we're using today are available on the link that I just posted. Yes, and that link's going to save you money and it's also going to 
get all the colors to you very quickly. Mm -hmm. Much easier and to find. There you go. All There's one together. coat, so you can see that it's going to level out and it begins to dry. It's going to shrink down and bond to the surface. <laughs> We're going to come back and paint the inside of the door as well as the frame. But I just want to show you this first coat and get that on there really good for you. Lisa says, uh oh, I suddenly have multiple projects. I'm pretty <laughs> sure I need this paint. All it's right. addicting, Lisa, for sure. Yes, it is. And if you want that chalk paint look and you don't want to wax and you don't want to worry about trying to put on a good, level, smooth top coat, mm -hmm. this is the product you've only dreamed of in the past. It's never been available until just recently, until we came out with this product that would allow you to not have to do any waxing or top coating. This product is actually designed for exterior use. Mm -hmm. It's that strong. so. It will give you a good durable coat and still look soft and a, like a waxed finish. So it's not going to give you a shine like latex. It's going to give you a beautiful look and glow just like a waxed paint. So can you see? We have a couple people asking about the paint. Let me see if I've got the camera right. All in one paint. This is the color Abbey that we're using. There are 25 colors you can choose from. I'll show them that. On the uh, kit while Paula's painting there. Let me see if I can. Uh oh, I'm gonna have to pick it up. I can't see it good. Okay. Let's see. And you guys can swipe your cab, uh, comments to the right. So I'm just gonna kind of pan through some of these colors for you. I'm getting a quote on the frame. Girls. And I've got the camera backwards here so that you can read these names. So bear with me while I try to figure out my directions here. There we go. So this is just some of the colors. This is 16 of the 25 that we had handy painted on some sample boards for you. So, um, Karen, you can order on Amazon. Uh, I don't believe they're doing the Prime just yet, but you can order from us. Uh, just make sure your seller is Heirloom Traditions Paint and we can definitely ship that to you in Australia. So I'm gonna try to go through some of these questions here. People are wondering about um, how long it's gonna last. This is a permanent is it paint. Too good to be true? It is not too good to be true. People have been using this product. It is so good that it was voted by all the Do It Best hardware stores nationwide as the number one product in their distribution warehouse. So if it's good enough to be in a national hardware chain, I have to tell you that it is tried and true and it does exactly what we say that it does. So I'm going to flip around so you can see the inside of this door a little bit better because the door doesn't open back all the way. We have a couple people asking if you sanded these cabinets ahead of time. No ma'am, you don't have to sand. That's the beauty of it. You don't have to sand. You have to clean. That is very important. You do have to clean. Let me see if I can keep going here. Sorry, I didn't realize it was going to be at an angle. Julianne says she can see streaks right now. Do you want to talk about kind of that's how only one coat. How it works. It's one coat. Now, a lot of people say, do you take off the cabinet doors and all that? You can. You certainly can do that. But for demonstration purposes, this cabinet has a European hinge. What I mean by that is it's not obvious from the front, so you're not having to cut around it. Put it on the inside of the door. You can use this true applicator and just get the job done quickly. Now, in your own home, of course, you're not racing the clock. We're just trying to show you how easily you can make this happen in your own home and many people can contest to you that they have done this in hours versus days. It depends on how long and how much time you want to put in. But we've spent about an hour up here already in this kitchen on something we were doing earlier and that's we're going to finish this tonight right here. So now I just take this little brush and trim around these Euro hinges which I don't, I don't really want to take these off. I'm not sure exactly how they go on. It's a little more difficult. But you can take an artist brush and go in around the hinge and just wipe off anything you were to get on them and do that. And this paint, again, will level out and look beautiful as it begins to dry. It will settle down and smooth out. So I'm using a chip brush at this moment, but that's just to get around the small areas and cut this in. Now I may get a smaller brush even and go a little tighter. And I have that right here. So when I need to get on in there, I can use this. Can you talk about what type of cabinets these are? These are a fact these are a factory laminate cabinet. There's no wood here on the inside. This frame is wood, but this door is totally a particle board with a laminate, a plastic laminate over it. And all we did prior to getting ready to paint was clean it really well. And this is, again is in our work kitchen, so 
uh, even though there probably wasn't a lot of cooking going on in this kitchen, we didn't take any chances, and we made sure that we cleaned away all those years of settle, settling of dirt, and who knows what cleaners have been applied to them over the years. So to make sure we got it nice and clean before we applied the paint, and have it ready to go. So TSP is what we use. We just mix it up in a spray bottle and spray it on and use the little scotch bright pad to get in there and scuff it up and get off all that build up. And that's, that's the same thing I would recommend you do. And I always, people ask often, do you paint the inside of the cabinet? Absolutely, I never paint the inside. I just paint the inside of the door, just like we're doing right here and paint right around to the inside lip. So basically you're painting that frame that's holding the door and the inside of that. Sorry, I'm showing no, no, back here. No, no, can't see it. Okay, good. I'm just getting it for a change. Thank uh, you. We got a couple of people asking again about the brush strokes and the streak. So sure. guys, this is the first coat and it is still wet. So paint that is going to self level and smooth out those strokes, that's not gonna happen until the paint really starts to dry. Right. So this is- see, hopefully you'll yes. see that before we get off of this slide and you'll see how it's gonna mm -hmm. level out. So this has only been on just a few minutes. So the first coat also, I always warn everybody, the first coat can look a little scary sometimes depending on the color that you're using, especially this one looks really good, but um, don't be alarmed at the first coat. No, don't be The alarmed. magic really happens on the second coat. If you've used this product, please comment that you've used this product so others can see mm -hmm. that. Brooke Caswell is on here. Oh, awesome. She probably She's can tell. Many. Thank you, Brooke. Um, Monica wants to know, is this washable after it dries? Can we talk about cure times? It's and absolutely like washable, thing? scrubbable, and stain resistant. Uh, we do a lipstick test on a white door often when we're in the hardware shows and show people how that it cleans amazingly and doesn't stain with even red or like um, tomato stains. You can also paint your backsplash, you can paint tile backsplash, uh, you can paint any porous surface or non-porous, either or, you can paint them. So that got the inside of that door. Do you have lipstick in your purse? We can do it on one of these little... You know, I is. don't know. I don't think I do, no, actually. I didn't bring mine up. But the lipstick test is a great way to show you how, how the paint cleans. But just paint the inside of the door and the glare is killing us here. Let's see if this has started to dry any at all. Of course you want to keep your door uh, open until you're finished. But as it begins to dry, you can already see. We're not ready for coat two. But I want you to see right here. Can you see where it's looking flat right here? You see how the brush strokes are going away? So it's going to lay down, it's going to dry, it's going to look great. So that's the whole goal. Hopefully you get something dry so you can see it before we go off of the air here. We've got a bunch of people asking the name of the paint again that are just coming on with us. So let me show that for you Hi, guys everybody. real quick. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for joining us. So it is, let me get up out of the comments here, all in one paint. And the color we are using is called Abby. A B B E Y. It's this beautiful warm gray, uh, but there are 25 colors, and I'll show those to you again here in a bit. Uh, but it is all in one paint. So you want to get over here and start on your dishwasher? Sure. You want me to do, or you want to do? Go right ahead. I all right. Can do it while you start on coat two. Okay. All right. I'm gonna move over and start on this side so they can see. We have this door right beside the microwave that has coat. This one has one coat. So I'm gonna right, man, go here and paint, and paint coat two. Let me have my stuff. We got a lot of directions we're going here. Yeah. I don't want to be sure to focus on what she's doing, painting this microwave. So it's so it's going to our dishwasher. Sorry, <laughs> I'm on the microwave. I'm looking at here. All right, guys, here you go. Let's see if you can see me good now. All right, ladies, keep posting your comments. So we had a couple of people ask where we're from. So we're from Heirloom Traditions Paint. We are based out of Louisville, Kentucky. Can you tell? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lori, I've posted the link a couple times for you to order. It's an Amazon link, and I'll post that again here in just a minute. Sorry, we're just the two of us, and we're both painting, so I am going to get to a lot of your questions. Any that we don't get to on the air, we will definitely come back and comment and reply to you after this live. So just bear with us here. There's a lot of you on here and a lot of questions and comments coming through, so we will uh, definitely get to those. And it is a savings by going through the link that you see mm -hmm. tonight. You are going to save money, definitely. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do quartz for $29. So. Which is absolutely amazing and I'm heard of for this product. And at this point, have we, we've not even used a quart in this entire kitchen here, so you can see. Let me show you what we've used. Can you see down in there? This is what no, we're both really. pouring out of. Or where, let's see. Looks we're about to here. So this will cover, this quart will cover 140 square feet, which an eight by 10 kitchen is generally 140 square feet. So just so you know, this will paint an entire kitchen. 
but just to make sure you have enough. Sometimes people spill, use up paint, put it on a roller, all different kinds of things. So make sure you get enough. And if you think you've got a bigger than eight by 10 kitchen, get yourself maybe two quarts. At this price, it's a great deal. So that's one, that made the second coat over that door. So just so you can see that one. While you're painting, I'm gonna go ahead and take them over here to the dishwasher go here. Right start. I'll get started. Right. On this one. So bear with me here. We're gonna get down low and get on the floor. I'm not gonna be able to get super close, but there you can see it. Okay, so dishwasher coatings are a little bit different. These are baked on, kind of catalyst finish. Uh, they're super, super slick. So for this one, I have used um, Clean Strip uh, Easy Liquid Sander Deglosser. It is just a rub on product. It sounds really scary because it has that dirty sandy bird in it, right? But um, it is just a rub on product. And what it does is it kind of roughs up the coating on here, just like you would do with sandpaper, but without any of the mess. And, and the work. And the work, right? <laughs> and it also degreases at the same time. So it's a two for one. We are all about that. So I've already done that here, but um, just get yourself a good terry cloth towel. As you can see, this thing was quite filthy. Um, so we've already used the deep glosser and I've got, you can kind of hear it now. Hear how it's not super slick. So we've already kind of roughed it up here with the sander deglosser and we're ready to go. So I'm gonna bring this paint down here because I'm afraid I'm gonna spill it if I don't. So it's gonna make it look like a custom piece, mm -hmm. like a built in. Because if you had an older dishwasher, you might wanna kind of just blend it in with the cabinets, especially if it's far away from your fridge and your stove. It's kind of a white or yellowy eyesore that kind of stands out sometimes. So not everybody will need to do this, but. If you're in an older home and replacing that dishwasher just isn't an option right now, this is a quick fix for you. You can also do refrigerators, same process. Freezers, deep freezers, deep people freezers. painted everything. Front doors, uh, outdoor, you can use this on pots. You can out, use it on your uh, garage doors. Mm -hmm. You can put it on your shutters. We've had a couple people ask about formica, um, yeah. laminates. <laughs> if you can name it and it's not living, I'm going to say, <laughs> yes, you can paint it. How about successfully, that? not that you can just put paint on it, but you can be successfully your front happy door. Lisa, I'm adding to your project list that you were talking about earlier. Um, your shutters, the bay door, your garage door. I mean, literally, you think of it. This is the only chalk style paint that is indoor and outdoor grade paint. So I'm just getting a quick coat on here, and then this is going to have to establish some bonding. So it's going to take a little bit. And also, you're going to be able to paint the plastic at the top. So that's the, that's the other great thing about this. So I don't think Paula's shown stippling yet. I'm going to stipple on this. I like to go right ahead. Because stipple. Be great. So what I'm doing, instead of doing, so I've got all my paint on. I'm working quickly here. I'm uh, trying to while I'm yapping. But um, now that I've got it on, I'm just going to go through and kind of dab with my sponge. And I'm going to paint this, so don't, don't freak out that I've got paint on it. I'm planning to go around that because that's the yellowy part I really want to hide. But what this does, it creates this little tiny eggshell texture, if you can see that. Of course, you can't have brush strokes because I don't have a brush. But it creates this nice little texture, and it really helps your paint adhere to slick surfaces. There's scientific reasoning behind it. I won't bore you with all of that, but it breaks surface tension. And it just works. That's all I can tell you. It just works. So look at that. Is that not a major difference? Now we're gonna hit, I'm gonna trim in. I'm not gonna paint this panel part here where the electronics are because I don't wanna risk ruining anything there. And it's there. nice and white. Yeah, and it's nice and white, yeah, it's yeah. not yellow. So I'm gonna try to cut this in with my chip brush here. And I'm gonna work on that and check for some of your questions and we'll go back to follow. All right. So we're on to where you want to go. Coats everywhere. Uh, you wanna show them the color card again? I think that would yeah. be Yeah, let me, I need to get it up higher. I'm having a hard time. All right. well, maybe you can hold it better than I can, maybe. I'll hold it here. Well, maybe you can hold it steady and I can sure. move the camera around. Let's do that. Okay. So let's guys. talk about picking colors for your cabinets and what great colors that we have and the ones you can see the best here. There we go. Now, obviously whites, all of these, this is the whitest of the whites, as you can tell here. Colosseum, cashmere is the snow white. Colosseum is a white that has a gray tone, looks great in farmhouse. Um, if you're decorating farmhouse and you want to go white, this is the one to go with rather than the stark white. Manor House is toward the creamy white. Abbey is the color that we're using right now. This is our color Corinthian, which is between a black and a brown. Absolutely beautiful color, and it looks like oil rub bronze. 
So if you have oil rub bronze pulls, maybe you want to paint your lowers a color or an island a certain color, and you want to do something unique, that's a great option if you have a faucet or maybe you have bin pulls on your cabinets in oil rub bronze. That's a great option. I love this color myself and I use it often in my own home. It looks great with grays and gold tones if you still have some of the old colors from from yet, you know, maybe your decor is not totally in the gray family yet. Great color to help you bridge the gap between the cool side of gray and trying to bring that gold tones into the gray family. Cobblestone is a true mid-tone gray, not too dark, not too light. Perfect color in gray. The next color is a gray, a gray, but it has a blue undertone called Cathedral. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous color, but it does play into the blue side of things, so be careful with your lighting. This one may look blue on you. Um, the next color is Iron Gate, one of the number one selling colors. It is a true rich black, looks great on doors. It is the number one seller for interior and exterior doors. People paint their exterior doors with this and they're blown away by how beautiful this color looks. It has a beautiful velvet luster, a low luster sheen without that shiny, does look. not look plastic. Like it does. Exterior. That's right, and it doesn't show brush marks, and it doesn't look like it's, uh, well, something you want to paint over. So it's an awesome color, beautiful color. Uh, verdigris is a gorgeous country kind of a green, and it's something that you would, um, how to explain? It's not sagey, but yet it's it's not a mint. It's not hot. Very it's farmhousey. A, yeah, yeah it's a, it's a green that's very much in 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 decors right now. The next color, very. This is this one is a hot color for teenagers. Everybody's loving on the Amalfi color. Looks the Amalfi looks really really gorgeous with our color called Polo, which is the navy. Um, We've had a lot of people painting their bathroom Polo? vanities. It's not, even Polo's on here. not on there. Um, not all the colors are on there. Um, the next color is one of the number one selling what we call our fashion colors, Mediterranean, which is a gorgeous turquoise. It's, my it's Melissa's. Op she painted everything in her house this color. You can't even see anything in there. It's all Amalfi. <laughs> Or all Mediterranean. I can paint me that color. <coughs> she's painted vanity. She's painted everything in the Mediterranean. It is beautiful, I have to say. Antoinette is another very much um, fashionable color right now. It is a very soft, pale blue gray. So it is an, one of the colors that you see trending right now. And in the reds, we have Regal, another great door choice. If you want to paint your front door, that is a great color for accenting things. Of course, you can paint anything you want with it, but Regal is a gorgeous red, and I'm going to think of it as more of a folk red, so it's not a hot red, but it's more of an American red. Very good front door. Color. Yes, it is a great color for front door, right, and if you're doing things in the American vein and so on, or uh, it's just a great color for outdoor, for farmhouse reds and so on. The next color is Stonehenge, and that is a gray. It's a warm shade of a gray, so it looks great with Abbey, the color we're painting with. It also works well with Corinthian. If you wanted to pair two colors together, you could put Stonehenge together with Abbey. These two look great together. Um, as a lower and an upper, people, again, are two-toning their cabinets or painting an island. Maybe you're painting a dining table and you want to paint the chairs colors. This all works for furniture, by the way. And then the other color, Cappuccino, is a true taupe and looks amazing with our weathered wood antiquing gel. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. And the next color is called Meadow Sweet, and it is a soft country yellow. It looks a little bright here from what I can see on my phone, but it is a gorgeous shade of a soft yellow. It looks pretty for babies. Uh, it looks great in the farmhouse situation again. So all of, there's several of these colors that work great for babies' rooms, many of them. And of course, people don't paint typical baby colors like they used to, but that is a good one that will cross over into a lot of genres. So. That is it for the colors. Now, if you want to antique any of these colors, just note that there is an antiquing gel that comes as a part. There's only two kinds of this product. There's the paint, and then there is the antiquing gel. So if you'd like to make your things look antiqued and distressed, you can certainly do that with this paint. As soon as you put it on, you begin to work with it and start distressing it at that time. You don't let it harden overnight because you can't distress it at that point. Uh, so start removing it. You can wet distress, even using a damp cloth. As soon as you apply the paint and it begins to dry, take a damp cloth and you can go around your cabinet doors, accent them, your furniture pieces. Uh, if you wait, you'll have to use sand, a sand, sanding block to distress. A distress early is the key. So you can also use our antiquing gel, which is a way to tone it. It is a fabulous product, easy to work with. If you want to have that look where that piece looks aged, getting down into the cracks and the details, you can use our weathered wood antiquing gel and check that out. So that is a great one. We're not really talking about that much, so much right now because we didn't want to muddy that up here with the cabinet painting. So it is something that is available if that's your heart's desire is to do that to your kitchen cabinets. So you can do that here with this product. So let's go back over and see what she's doing.
down on the dish. She's trying to get fancy and get all around that plastic piece. I'm a taper. I really need tape, but I'm trying to cut this in my hand for <laughs> She's you. doing pretty good with a quick job. Yeah, I'm just using a little artist brush here. Um, Paula, I've got some more questions for you. All right, go right ahead. Okay, so Candace wants to know, I've never heard this term, uh -huh. Euro den cabinets. Can you paint over those? What's that? She said Euro den. I wonder if she meant Euro hinge. Euro den. Don't know what that is. I'm either. sorry. I can't answer that, that question. Okay. If I knew more, is it, is it a type of material or is it the style of the cabinet? You can paint anything. I'm certain about that. And I'm sure this product, if it's a cabinet, you can paint it. Yep. And maybe that's a laminate of some sort. I'm thinking maybe a European type laminate. So, I want this paint down here. Nah, See a right. bit. You got your paint right here. Oh, yeah. So Robert's asking if this paint is scratch resistant. So you want to talk scratch about scratch resistant? Uh, yeah, let's talk about that just a little bit. As you, as you watch her paint, I'll just chat with you here. The paint, uh, like any other paint, has a time to cure. Uh, you can handle the paint. You can go back into your kitchen and start using it. We just recommend that you don't do any scrubbing or anything to where you're going to be using an abrasive on the cabinet for at least 30 days. Now, that doesn't mean you can't use it, but you have to be you have to handle it a little more careful as this paint begins to cure and lose the moisture that's in the paint, it begins to shrink down and tighten down and even looks better as time goes on as well as hardens. And it, it hardens down to your piece. So that's what's happening as that moisture wicks away. All of that is, that's left behind is going to harden on top of your surface. So just be careful as you're handling your cabinets. And again, don't do any brisk cleaning or anything like that. You can do mild cleaning and wiping it away, but don't do any scrubbing because don't do a scratch test the night after you apply this because uh, it will begin to bond, but it won't be scratch proof now. So you just make sure you know that. In that there's nothing including a car that has a baked on enamel finish that is scratch proof. So you can scratch anything. Um, it just depends on how hard you're trying to do that. So it is going to wear and hold up beautiful and that we promise. All right, and then that we know. Um, Let's get right here. Let me do this and you answer okay. questions. How Debbie's, about that? Okay, so Debbie's yes. asking about um, painting over enamel. Um, an enamel like we just painted over here. I would assume this is, so. so this, we, is an, this is an enamel type paint that's mm -hmm. on this thing here. Yeah. Yes, you can paint over enamels, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking you mean like uh, enamels on your cabinets is what I'm yeah, guessing. Like an oil-based enamel. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. When in doubt, use that sander deglosser. Yeah. You can never go wrong there. Nope, you can never go wrong using it. Uh, Lisa's got a great question. So she said she's previously painted her cabinets white uh -huh. and it is chipping. Yep. So what does she need to do to use this? Lisa, most most likely that whatever you've painted with and it's chipping away, what you need to do is remove any loose and peeling paint. And that may require you to do some sanding. So your, your new surface is only as good as what you're painting over. So if something's loose, you're gonna continue to have loose and peeling paint. So that's very important that you note you gotta get that off before you put on the new. So that is something that to take care of, take a sanding block, get it off, you, even a palm sander and remove all of that. Maybe you wanna go over it with a sanding deglosser because there was obviously some reason that that old paint didn't bond. Most likely it was probably an enamel or a latex and maybe the surface wasn't prepped underneath and you may have painted over oils or who knows what someone did but these paints of old are not the new paints and the new technology of today. So they don't have that bonding property like these, the new paints do. So this paint has an extreme bonding power and it has a built-in bonding primer as well as its own um, wax. So all of that is, that's why we call it the all-in-one paint. So I'm gonna keep painting and the mail's gonna drop off to you. All right, back to me. <laughs> no one's entered the giveaway yet. We're trying to oh give you goodness. a $75 paint kit. Um, cabinet restoration kit, so it would include a quart of your paint, a pint of the antiquing gel that Paula mentioned earlier, and our great Syntec chalk brush, which is a $40 value. So all you gotta do is comment, there's the brush, and tell me why your kitchen needs a makeover. Be as detailed as you want. I'm gonna pick a winner based on what you say. So right now you've got really, really great odds because I literally don't think I've seen one comment yet. Really? Nope, at least from what I flipped through here. So definitely tell me that. Okay, um, let's see. A couple people asking about stuff. I'm just gonna run through. Countertops, yep. yes, you can paint countertops. Um, it's not tile. for countertops, but yes, you can paint countertops. You mm -hmm. can do, people do, people paint floors, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. So, um, yep. you know, we don't recommend it for those uh, things because those are- Those are tough, those right? Are tough. Those, those are surfaces that have sitting water and all that good we stuff. We didn't design it to do. But people do it all the time. It looks great and it performs great. Um, can you paint over wallpaper? Yes. Um, if it is, what type of wallpaper do they maybe need to use a primer? Uh, if it's a paper wallpaper, 
Sometimes you may be wetting that paper again. You may get it to bubble up and mm -hmm. re-agitate all those oil, the yeah. glues underneath. You might want to use a primer over the top of it first, meaning an oil-based primer so it won't wet it. But that's only if you're, if you're doing, if you're going to be Hold painting on, I'm trying over, to find her. There she is. If you're going to be painting over a, a paper paper, in other words, if it doesn't have a vinyl coating over I'm it. I'm going to back up to show that dishwasher. That it looks amazing. It's amazing. Hold on, guys. Let me, i got to move this back here. How great does that look from an old yellowy dishwasher? Let's get another coat on. I mean, my dishwasher's not yellowy yet, but that makes me want to go home and paint it right there. <laughs> I'm impressed. You're gonna go paint your own. I'm gonna go. Yeah, Brian will kill me. It'll take me about eight years to do it between work, <laughs> even though we did it here super yeah. fast. But I knew it'll take me a lot longer. Um, let's see. Give us those questions, we'll answer yeah. you, girls. Um, Lisa, yes, of course, furniture. Same exact process. Again, even on a hard wine surface like your kitchen table top, you do not need a top coat. Again, this stuff is durable enough for exterior without a top coat. So if it's durable enough to withstand snow and ice and rain sun. and sun, wow. it is definitely going to be durable enough for your cabinets, for your uh, tabletop, that kind of stuff. Let me see. And I'm just going to recap real quick. So I know we've got a lot of new people on as we're wrapping up here. So um, what we did to prep these cabinets is we cleaned them with TSP or anything that says degreaser on it. That's really important. You want to make sure it actually says degreaser on the bottle. You're going to want to pay extra attention. Let me show you real quick. Bear with me. These cabinets right here. See these around your stove? Those are going to be the greasiest and have the most buildup. I can almost guarantee it, unless you're one of those lucky uh, people that doesn't have to cook in your kitchen. If you have a service or something that does that for you. So these you want to give some extra attention to. I would recommend taking a scrubby brush or scrubby pad of some sort with your TSP, and you're going to have to really put some elbow grease behind these kind of cabinets. Something like this, some kind of like Brillo pad, scotch pad. Um, really, really scrub, 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 okay? On all of them, but particularly pay a lot of attention to these. Once you start to break that grease down with a degreaser, you will be able to feel that, okay? Once your cabinets are good and clean, I'm gonna come back to Paula while she's painting away here. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. I just want you to see it. So, um, follow the instructions on your degreaser. Some say to do a water bath after, some say you do not have to. So whatever degreaser you're using, follow the instructions on the bottle. Once you have thoroughly removed all the surface oils from your cabinet and allowed that to dry, all you gotta do is put the paint to it. It's really that easy. Put on a good amount of paint. Did you show them without a fully loaded brush? No, I didn't. Okay. Catch that. Let me show that to them real quick. Okay, go ahead. Okay, bear with me here real quick. I wanna give you all the good tips and tricks here, right? Oh, sorry, I had to straighten out the camera. Okay, so when we say you need a good coat, you're gonna dip your brush in about a third of the way, and you're just gonna offload one side. See, so I've got plenty of paint on this side. I'm gonna put it on the cabinet, smooth it out a couple times, and leave it alone. Ladies, think of this like nail polish. The guys in the, uh, who are on this page may not get this reference, but you know how nail polish, if you keep going into it and going over and over and over it, it tacks up, it creates texture, it's gonna create those brush marks that you don't want. So put it on, smooth it out a couple times, leave it alone, Don't let dry it dry. Yeah. Now we are kind of rushing some dry times here. Like Paula said, she's kind of going back over this cabinet already. This. I wanted to see this thing. So do as we say, not as we do. Let yours fully dry. That typically is gonna take about 30 to 45 minutes, heat and humidity depending. So let it dry. Um, I said TSP, uh, Tom, Sandy, Paul. You can get that at the hardware store. Um, actually, it's on uh, Michelle's link that she's been posting. So it's all right there for you. You can get it all from Amazon. You can get it all from Amazon Prime. So we have all 24 of our colors, or 25 of our colors, I'm sorry, are available on Amazon Prime. They're on that link. So if you need it quick, if you are ready to get started on your project, you can get it super, super fast. So quantities are limited for the Prime, but we're the manufacturer, so we have all you need. Just make sure the seller is Heirloom Traditions Paint. To okay? receive her discount. Yes, to receive her special pricing of $29 a quart. That cabinet kit is $75. And these brushes are actually on sale through Michelle's link for $17.50. This is a lifetime tool. You will get lots and lots of uses out of this. You're just going to clean it with soap and water. So dish soap, warm water. Don't let the paint harden in it. So right after this live, we're going to get these washed out. 
and you can soap use them water. tons and tons and tons of times. So, soap and water oh, now we're getting some uh, some entries into the contest here. Yeah, be sure and tell them soap and water cleanup. Yep, I did. Oh, you did. I'm sorry. Uh, can you paint your fireplace around? Yes, I've actually done that in my personal home. I've painted the tile. I've painted the mantel. So have I. I painted the brick in my mom's home. It's beautiful. We've all painted it. I've painted my phone, uh, fossil stone backsplash in my kitchen. Made such a huge difference in it. Okay. Getting it wrapped up here. We're going to have this finished. We're not far off. I'm going to take them around and show them where we are at the moment. All right. Let me just show you. Oh, she's going to find the winner. So hurry up and enter if you haven't entered already. I'm going to just show you where we are. We took down a, a holder here, but that's the first coat. Let me go ahead and put a second coat on that while we're standing here. I want you to be sure and see the second coat. Over there wasn't so obvious. Since that's all dry now, you can quickly see how all that dried out, right? You can see that all the brush strokes dried out, except where it needs another coat. So I'm using a Sintec brush. Get a good full coat of paint, then I go to the project. Just drag it down and just don't keep overworking it. That's the main key to this, is not overworking it. Just watch for grips and runs and you don't want to over put on too much paint. Oh, I've got a great comment we got to talk about. Okay. Oh, it just went away. Oops. Everybody's commenting so fast because I think her name was Cher. Um, she said that she has looked at other paints and has just always been so overwhelmed by waxing and top coating and priming and sanding and all the different steps that yep. she's just never actually pulled the trigger on a project. So were we. And that's why that's how this comp this how this came about. We were just like that. Realizing that the consumer couldn't figure it out because there were so many layers and steps and whatever you had to do. So that's a great one. Okay, so we're gonna leave that alone and not touch it anymore and that's gonna give us that coat. And that one's done. I gotta show you guys this dishwasher. Can you see that? <laughs> she loves the dishwasher. I love painting appliances. Paula thought I was crazy the first time I said I was going to paint our refrigerator for our shop. She and said, it still looks good, I have uh -huh. to say. It was cute, and I love yeah. it. And it makes it, oh, we have to oh, tell yeah. the chalkboard. You know, girls, everybody loves chalkboards today. This paint makes a cleanable chalkboard. So you can make a, oh, you can make a chalkboard in a Amalfi. You can make a turquoise chalkboard on your drywall, and you can write on it and wipe it away. It doesn't leave the ghosting image behind. So... Awesome, awesome thing. On the inside of your cabinet, so yeah, you can, you can write, write on it. Your grocery list or your chore list for your kids. Or yeah, let's go over here and try these. Okay. Since we got these, we got the inside, we got the doors looking great. So that's two coats, and you can see, I believe, we're done. Mm -hmm. So as that begins to settle down, it's going to smooth out mm -hmm. and look even better. Sorry to get it crooked. Y'all are like me; it drives me crazy. <laughs> I know, but mine's right crooked. Right <laughs> All right, let's get some paint away. You okay, ready? she's going to announce the winner. All right. Okay. What I you got? picked Kathy Ogden. She said she has an 80s kitchen. Okay. And she needs to redo that and her dining table and chairs. All right. Oh, good deal. So Can you hear that? Kathy Ogden, you're the winner with your 80s kitchen. Mel picked you. And so you're going to get the cabinet kit and the choice of your color. And I'm going to hold those colors up one more time right here for you. So you and can I'm see gonna those. And I'm going to post the link to shop one more time. And for she's going to post the link to shop. So. Jump back on there and take a look and see if you can find the color you want. And so she's going to show you. I'm going to try to keep that level so y'all don't go crazy on me like I would. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so fun with a backwards camera. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So there's all the colors that you can get right now. There's actually and, a few more than this. This is oh, 16 of the 25. Of the 25. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. We didn't have them all on a board mm -hmm. that you could see tonight. Mm -hmm. So there's a few missing and there's a few great ones that are missing, mm -hmm. but some of these are best sellers. So. There they are. If you have questions, again, mm -hmm. still post them here in the mm -hmm. timeline. We'll jump back on and hopefully we can get all those answered and if, for you. And if you guys are interested in um, saving this so that you can go back and refer to it when you get your paint and you're ready to paint your cabinets, just share this to your timeline. It's really, really easy. All you have to do is click the share button, share it to your timeline, and it'll be there. So it'll be hard to find in the Crafty Morning uh, timeline oh, here. Oh, and you can save it also in yours. Once you save it to your timeline, mm -hmm. you can just hit save, and it'll save the video I'll right save to your mm -hmm. Yeah, so you'll have it saved. So that's what we do, too. We just mm -hmm. hit the right upper little three dots. Just hit that that says save video, and that way you can always refer to it in your own videos once you've saved it to your timeline. Okay, girls, we're going to get off here again. Once again, thank you, Kathy Ogden. You're the winner tonight of our giveaway. We thank you so much, Michelle, for having us here on Crafty Morning.
Melissa and myself, we look forward to seeing you again here. Thank you so much. Good night. Bye. Bye.